Captain's Log, Stardate 192.168.1.28. Me and my science officer, ZTech. Hey, hey, buddy, how are you doing? Good day, Captain. <laughs> Good day. We have crash landed on this planet of Factorkio many, many, many reports ago and have made ourselves a comfortable, comfortable base here. Unfortunately, when it came to making the last report, I kind of had a small suit malfunction and managed to not record any of my science officer's vocals. I, I must apologize for that, Mr. Science Officer. I, as much as I would love to be a narcissist and send all my reports off to head office with only my voice upon it, <laughs> uh, I decided that maybe we should just skip that one and have a little bit of a, a, a talk about what we did then. Uh, as I'm sure you remember, we got this a massive copper smelting line on the go, which we've only actually fired up two lines of it, but that seems to be working okay for us because we have massively backed up copper systems on the go. Uh, we also put in this new, well, I say new, we extended the bypass to the rail system because that was actually getting quite uh, quite snarled up at times when people, uh, when iron would want to leave to go back, but more would be coming in and they end up with a head-on collision. No nothing actually smashed into each other, thankfully, but it was getting pretty close. And also, for reasons of OCD, we turned this um, solar farm into a 4x4 rather than the 3x4 because, I don't know about you, even numbers, <laughs> much, much better. <laughs> well, the next step is, I guess, duplicating the 4x4 four by, four by four times. <laughs> four times, yeah, make it make a 16 by, uh, sorry, an 8 by 16, no, 8 by 8. Yeah. 16 is what I'm trying to think in my head for some reason. I don't know why. So, things that we have to do today. Uh, we are working on the logistics system. This is something that we actually started last time. We were like, yeah, we could get robots to move everything around the base. Uh, unfortunately, it turns out we have not actually made any sort of system for making purple or... Well, I was going to say or yellow um, science potions. But as you can see, they are right down here. We've got the yellow ones. We just don't have purple being made. Also, this... I mean, it's, it, it got us through, or it is getting us through making the logistics system, but I just don't think it's going to quite cut it when it comes to uh, full-blown research systems. It's all temporary, Captain. I'm planning oh, to, to be fair, it's all temporary. <laughs> That's what I just said. It's all temporary. <laughs> so, uh... Okay, I have a... Um, I actually have like 120 purple sciences in my inventory right now. I am going to go get rid of that. But whilst I'm at that... Did I ever tell you about my previous life as a, a galactic colonization pioneer? No, Captain. No, well, but obviously, with life extension, I've had a, a fair fair few years to go off and experience all the wonders that the galaxy have to offer. Uh, I did start off in the soul system, as I know a fair few of us human-shaped people did. Um, Humanoid? And I, I try okay. Yeah, oh wow, there was a little bit of soup jitter there. That wasn't the best, but we'll live with it. <laughs> and yeah, and they shipped us off in a in a, in a generation ship. I'm, I'm sure you've heard of, of these concepts before, where they, uh, they took a, a whole group of us and they put us in a, a rather large... Uh, it, well, it wasn't the equivalent of a space station, but a space station with propulsion systems. There was enough room for the for the 120 of us. Ah, uh, such such fun times remembering those those 120 people. As I remember that all their names individually. There was Sam and Claire and Shauna and Sean. Ah, uh, they they were just such good people. But anyway, we we made our way over towards the uh, the Alpha Centauri system to start with. I'm sure you've heard of that most famous of uh, original colonization attempts. Yes. Uh, Unfortunately, it turned out there was no atmosphere at the time. Uh, it was it was quite shocking. We turned up expecting to have a wonderful and beautiful new life to ourselves, but uh, our copper is massively under attack. I am going to take the tank up there. Um, but unfortunately, uh, all things fell down around us, and we had to move on to another place. It was much sad times. Uh, we, we lost one of our number there. Sean, well, in fact, it was two of our number, Sean and Shauna. Um, it's, it's a bit hard to tell them apart. We, uh, they, were, they were twins. They were um, twins as well. Yeah, yeah. And their parents yeah, yeah. decided to call them such similar names. They did, yeah. Uh, very, um, according to themselves, very unimaginative parents. Am I going to be able to fit through here without breaking stuff? Look at uh, this. We need a bigger pathway here. Or not drive a tank down there. <laughs> Wow, I need to get to the uh, the copper line. I suppose I could have picked it up and taken it with me, but... <laughs> you do have the power of a Hulk to pick up the entire thing and just move it where you want, so... Uh, the wonders of self-compressing nanotechnology. 
Uh, obviously, the whole of this tank is actually made up of mostly empty space, as is all matter um, in, in the universe. In the universe, we, we inhabit anyway. Uh, the vast majority of space is just binding energy. You know, it's, it's crazy. Uh, and if we take that away and just compress it down even more, as is uh, our way with the current masters of the material world around us that we are, there is a tank over this side already. Yes. So I'm just driving um, past it. Uh, I, I also prefer the method of just uh, turning it into information because it is information to begin with. It is, yes. The digitization of equipment is uh, is very good. The problem you have with that is when you uh, come out the other side, if you will. Uh, you've digitized it. You've put it on your hard drive. You've turned up at your other place. We had this technology in the uh, in the the colonization ship, obviously. Yes. Uh, unfortunately, we turned up to uh, Alpha Centauri, as I said, and we were expecting an atmosphere to help us build, uh, you know, like aluminium oxide. We needed the oxygen in the air. Now, we could have taken it out of the rock, obviously, masters of the world around us, but it was just a little bit more awkward. So we decided to uh, to move on, as you do. Uh, but yeah, we, we found ourselves with the information without actually the atoms to put them back together, oh, uh, which... Yeah. Which was very awkward, as I'm sure you can understand. Uh, so we moved on to Gliese, oh, 5876 or something like that. I can't remember the exact numbers off the top of my head. I have just run out of fuel. Yay, tanks. <laughs> Yay, tanks. Well, they, they are based on a machine. They are indeed and based on a machine. And you have a chorus right there. You could just... Yeah, oh, normally I have my logistics lots giving me um, some solid fuel but today it turns out that is not the case you are okay. outside of the network and there's no solid fuel in the network being added there yet. is no solid fuel in the network we should we should work on that interesting story so how was the travel the travel was very very boring as i say we we there was 150 of us 148 by the time we left uh oh i didn't put it in the right place uh by the time we left alpha centauri uh unfortunately in the in the trek that it took us to get to gliese 5978 i really need to look up the right numbers at some point <laughs> uh we, we had a few of your head i thought you were trained but i know crazy crazy uh, i uh what was i going to say uh, by the time we got to Gliese, uh, unfortunately, there had been a few personal disputes uh, had happened. Now, I know it's crazy in today's modern age of brain augments and um, VR relaxation techniques that anybody could ever get into any sort of kerfuffle with any other human being. But it turns out isolating humans for many decades at a time uh, doesn't work out particularly well for social structures. So by the time we got to Gliese 5978, there was exactly 14 of us. Oh um, my. <laughs> yeah, That's it was quite kerfuffle. worrying. Yeah, it was a bit of a kerfuffle. And unfortunately, uh, I believe it was the last one High Command ever sent out like that. Uh, I'm not sure what they did afterwards, but for, for, I was but in the first wave. Interesting. Because uh, I know of the technology of basically sending humans to a ship with a cost slower than flight speed, but uh, in order to keep them in the pain, they run simulations for them. Really? Sim what type of simulations? Oh, the server is not responding. It's a terrible time for the server not to respond. <laughs> exactly that type of simulation. You should. Well, okay, well, my tank seems to be just turning around. Uh, I'm trying to fire and save myself, but literally as I got into the thing, it really had a bit of a. a I'm just hanging up. Uh, you are, oh man, what is going you on? Are walk you are going for a forest. Okay, I finally got my gun back. Why is it turning so much? <laughs> I'm just What's pressing forward to it. I'm just pressing forwards. That's all I'm doing. <laughs> okay. Well, and space because I really want the gun to take these guys out. <laughs> well, I might need to come up with a slightly more lag-resistant plan. <laughs> okay. Uh, let's let's get out and fix this. The space-time continuum seems to have stabilized a little bit. Let's try this again. And so many apologies for interrupting you there. You were talking about the uh, the new wave of technology uh, when it comes to human human colonization. Uh, well, yeah, they, they are basically just sending them in larger ships, smaller than the number of people on them, and keeping them... Smaller? Yes. I've got to say, this seems crazy. I, I definitely understood that one of the things that... Uh, that 
led us to ruin, if you will, was the fact that there was not enough of us. We didn't have uh, any mediators when we uh, bifurcated into the two groups and uh, Civil War started. Well, a smaller number of people because then the simulation runs smoother for everyone and they can have their own uh... corner of the simulation in order to separate themselves when things escalate. If so this simulation, was it a simulation of home or was it a new virtual place? Uh, it's a simulation of uh, the Earth as it went through its ages. Oh, okay. So more of an accelerated time so you could experience the learning process of humanity as a whole? Something like that. You would, well, they would literally start from the Stone Age and progress into the Space Age and to the moment when they actually board oh, the ship. Bad. Okay, yeah, okay. So they, they get to yeah experience everything that led up to the glories that is their new lives. And... Uh, on the way, they come to terms that, well, they are traveling to a different planet and they realize that their entire existence and everything that led up to that moment is actually not that bad. <laughs> you know, you just need to realize that uh, everything in the past just needed to align perfectly in order for you to exist and make that individual, individual choice. Choice, yeah, exactly. I mean, the if you think about how many base pairs there are in DNA, and all these had to come together in just the right way for you to even be a thing that could exist in the world. I mean, that alone, uh, say in the world, in the universe, sorry, uh, that alone is an uh, uncalculable probability. Though I'm sure someone has actually calculated it. Uh, <laughs> I wonder if someone has actually. Uh, I wonder what the the chances of you being this particular strand of DNA actually works out to be. Not quite sure. <laughs> no, I'm not sure. Do we do we know how many base pairs there are in humanity's DNA? I assume so. It's like thirteen billion or something like that, right? So what you're saying, if I if I get this right, is uh, after the horrors that happened on our ship, um, humanity decided it was safer to send their colonists off in a simulation of the of the universe so that they could learn to appreciate all that came before and thus not squander the wonderful opportunity that was theirs. Well, there are uh, also us. problems from the beginning. Uh, because they entered knowing that it was a simulation, uh, they, the first colonists also rejected it. Uh, trying to escape and uh, wanting to be quote-unquote free. Was it too too perfect? Was it? Uh, not that the human brain riled against it. Couldn't 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 accept it. Something like that. Uh, the, so the next colonies were basically taken as uh, still unborn. Oh, we took we took uh, fetuses and stuck them on a ship. I mean, this this actually is a, a, another question of the of the generation ship. Um, if if our method had continued on and obviously it didn't because it was a barbaric practice that we should not never uh, allow to continue but if we did i mean obviously with my life extension i got to carry on but there were a few um uh, as we call them mortals on the ship uh that decided that they wanted to live a lateral life and let their children uh, grow up on the ship and many people were in disagreement of this this is one of the things that the civil war started about um was the fact that these children did not have the choice to be where they were. Um, every, everybody else got on the ship knowing that they would never see the 7, 8, 24 billion people that yeah. lived in the solar system. Um, but these children were just stuck to the 150 because of our decisions. Uh, which, well, I personally would disagree with that. Uh, I wouldn't put my children on the ship, whatever. Uh, not forever until the end of their lives or uh, end of the journey. The, the problem with the generation ship is that you are forcing a group of, well, multiple generations to stay there and be happy with the life that they were given by their that parents. That we have already chosen for them. Though this was a situation that occurred on Earth quite often, um, where people would think that other countries would give their children a better life and whether oh no no i'm dead did you not fix your i did fix the tank but i've just got driven into a corner and stuck on a bit of just try i'm away them. i'm away 
I did. <laughs> Alright, maybe I'm not dead, but I really thought like I was dead. <laughs> oh, can you throw grenades out of the... Oh, you can. <laughs> can you do that and shoot? Yes, you can. Yes. <laughs> you, you are really multitasking it right now. <laughs> I, I really am. Throwing grenades, okay. shooting and driving at the same time. I think that's... Maybe illegal? And reliving experiences in my life. Yeah. Quite, quite an achievement, Captain. So during this simulation that you you and your your colonist friends went through, yes, um, was it all played from the? Uh, they say played. Was it all uh, experienced from the single person's point of view, or did people live sort of families, if you will? They took the the, the role of families. Uh, so they had a choice, of course. More more of them chose in the beginning to be together, but uh, they separated over time, and then they came back together because they realized that. Even though the simulation was perfect, quote unquote, perfect. Perfect, yeah. Knowing that it was a simulation made it imperfect. Knowing that uh, the lives of the people that they met mean meant nothing. Uh, yeah, they were just AI. Oh, I can't go through the rock. <laughs> <laughs> they were AI. Well, the best of, of, of approximation by the AI of the behavior of the person, well, living in that particular time that they were experiencing yeah it's always hard for the modern uh modern ai slash human to put themselves in the mindset of say the ancient greekian yes um, and um if you live and um realize that you're not the only one who is actually transitioning through the ages without ever aging or dying it um it comes to you come to the conclusion that um, you can't really get attached to any of those people. I should imagine it uh, leads a very um, nihilistic lifestyle as you come to think that you are the only one that matters. Um, that and of course, just actually, you are at that point. <laughs> Yeah, it's not not just the case of you think you're the only one that matters. You literally are the only one that matters. So the colonists, the part, well, the, those colonists, uh, came to the well. A lot of them rebelled and tried to escape, but a lot of them took the opportunity to, quote unquote, have fun, creating organizations, secret organizations for those simulated humans. Ah, uh, I think I heard one of the, uh, the 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 stories of these people. Um... One of them actually figured out how to imprint themselves on the NPCs around them. NPCs is not the term I want to use. On the constructs around them, and ended up using themselves as some sort of horrific tor uh, for uh, horrific scientific torture. Now, it was supposed to be for experimentation. Um, that was what she said it was. Um, but it just it seemed like torture from the outside. You know, there, there's only so far science can go without violating rights. Um, and turns out that this girl wanted to go all the way. A warning story to us all, never to uh, create clones of yourself and then think you have dominion over them. Here's really the question. Um, who, becomes, who becomes you? Well, the, the original is the first, right? The original is the one who has the ability to tie, tie the clone up before, <laughs> before it becomes conscious. I guess. <laughs> I suppose that that really really answers all questions of who has priority then. <laughs> I guess. <laughs> okay, I'm coming back home. I haven't quite managed to wipe them all out, but I need some cannon shells if I'm going to do this without dying. So, Captain, you travel that way, but would you travel the newer, more the alternate way? Let's put it like that. Uh, would I have myself disassembled and assembled on the other side? Uh, no, 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 well, being stuck in a simulation, knowing that you are in a simulation, and then traveling to a different colony. Yeah, I, 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 I am not 100% convinced that I'm not already living that lifestyle, but down that way leads to paranoia. So, uh, if that was a situation that was offered to me, I probably would take it, actually. Um, a, a, a nice little time living some extra lives before I can actually get on with the real job of colonizing another planet. Yeah, that 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 sounds that sounds like a job for Captain Twitchy. 
Could you also imagine that the simulation was used to teach the colonists all the basic survival skills necessary and then progress with the ages of technology in order for them to... Oh, definitely. So next on my, uh, next on my, uh, agenda was after Gleaser and the 14 of us arrived, we decided that there wasn't enough of us to settle on a, um, a brown dwarf uh, system. Because, what do you know, there, there wasn't much light there. Uh, maybe when it was all dark, there might have been some mis misunderstanding about who was stood where and who kissed who and what touched what. Um, so we decided what? to move on. <laughs> And uh, that, nothing to worry about. And we went on to Sirius. Uh, it's the, the brightest sky in the... Well, brightest sky? No. Brightest star in the uh, northern hemisphere star sky from Earth, from what I am, what I, what I remember from my childhood. Um, I might be a little bit wrong there, but it's close enough. Uh, Kitten, um, could you... Uh, I'm sorry, I'm interrupting you, but could you do oh, the no, same uh, logistics thing that we did with the solid... Uh, well, storage thing for the heavy oil here. What, so when this has got some stuff going in it, pump. Yeah, well, when that. it has more than, for example, 10,000 and or something like that. Yep, I have got you. I'm going to do it with red wire. Uh, so continue. Now, I saw some people going straight from the tank to the pump. Is that something that can actually happen here? Go crude oil. Because I've always put... Uh, is greater than we want like 9000 right yeah. uh okay yeah there we go it's done it works straight away that that was that was brilliant if we now put it below 2000 if i set that to below 2 it should just start pumping set go yeah look at that <laughs> logic without a logic unit <laughs> but anyway we moved on to Sirius so that we could see and and such such uh, mistakes could never happen again uh, th this, of course, Sirius, a, a blue giant star, um, turned out when we turned up in our rather smaller ship, um, we, we had to scavenge a few bits to be able to, like, make the Delta V to be able to get out. Uh, we, we, we ended up having to uh, turn quite a, quite a large portion of our um, life support system into a fuel pump. Uh, it wasn't the best, but as there were only 14 of us, we could take about nine-tenths of our air, air uh, life support system and... and Turn it over to what we needed. So anyway, we moved on to a a, a blue giant. Uh, that that was bright. That was very bright. And unfortunately, it was a little too much for the systems that we brought with us. And the on the ship uh, ended up frying all our oh navigation my. systems. Uh, and and that's where we ended up being marooned for the next uh, next fifteen and years. So you've been marooned how long there? Uh, it was only 15 years. Uh, we managed to send out a subspace uh, subspace distress beacon, and as we all know, subspace travels faster than the speed of light, almost instantaneously across the distance of the galaxy. Um, it's how I've been keeping in touch with the Galactic News Network, despite not being able to actually reach out to anybody. Um, and this system got a, uh, a cry out to high command. High command, I screamed, to the skies! Uh, even though that didn't really help me that much because I was looking at the sun. But I, then I turned around and looked. <laughs> I went, high command, please, we need help. Um, 15 years later, I got an acknowledgement and uh, let everybody know that we would, would definitely be receiving um, rescue. Th this was good as I was the last of four people um, I had been uh, de facto voted uh, captain at this point uh, because there was no one else, uh, even even remotely qualified, <laughs> to to take over the job. And because and obviously because of my extreme uh, experiences, the uh, high command decided that I I needed a new job, and thus I was given commission on your on your beautiful vessel, science officer. It was a shame that our trips lasted so short before we got to come to this planet. And uh, what happened to the people that were stuck with you? Mysteriously, all of them were eaten by local cannibals. Um, we we never actually found any any sign of them, and the expedition that came to rescue us only ever found me amongst this strange pile of bones everywhere. But um, yeah, I mean, all in all, it was just a horrific experience. Yeah. One, one that I'm really not looking to repeat. Though, have you seen the inside of this furnace over here, Mr. Science Officer? No, oh, Captain. It's quite warm. I think it could probably do with a little bit of... No, do you not? Okay, all right. Captain, I wasn't planning on enjoying 
Well, going in the furnace. Oh, you should uh, definitely consider that for the good the of the colony. Oh, no. High Commander offered me many uh, many days of counselling and even a medal for my for my bravery. What uh, I, I turned down the, me the medal, obviously, in memory of my fallen comrades. <laughs> uh, the counselling, uh, yeah, we, I, I went and became a counsellor. Uh, <laughs> I, I was a little surprised that they would uh, allow me onto the council. Oh, don't well, run me over. Whoa. Yeah. <laughs> Hit a wall instead of hurting the train. That was good. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Oh, God. <laughs> so, Mr. Science Officer, now that I have gone through and wiped out all the uh, the native ne'er-do-wells in the local area of our copper, uh, we should definitely just quickly try and expand our steel production, and then I think this report might be done. Uh, yeah, okay, Captain. I hope that I can get to the last piece of science in order to finish the logistics. Oh, yes. I forgot that that was actually something we were... Yeah, let, let's... So, the steel furnace and that's that bit of science, and we should be good. Oh, the massive robots just approaching and just taking out everything. Nom 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 nom. <laughs> if I didn't know that there were signals, I would- I just- I just had a heart attack. <laughs> <laughs> just trains approaching at, at high speed is just- mm -hmm, it's scary. Something that human mind is still not prepared even with self driving cars. I know, right? It's it's crazy how the human mind has created this entire world around us with all sorts of new, um, new obstacles and new new things to watch out for. But yet, even though the brain made it itself, still not still not capable of dealing with it. <laughs> oh, it's not even that. It's just the fact that even when you have logical and statistical information where it tells you that the system that the humans have made is much safer than the older system. It's still scary mm -hmm. to enter an intersection at full speed where there is no red lights and everyone's just minding their Going own business. And yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's because we're designed to work with other humans and we know that other humans are like super fallible. Yes, um, and it's it's strange that we Humans could have literally taken uh, grasshoppers, well, those that are capable of flight, their brains, put them inside of a computer, well, a machine, car, yep. and used its brain to navigate the surroundings. They fly, that is a very good idea. They fly in swarms and don't hit each other that often. <laughs> well, at, at is... all. <laughs> Yeah, I've, I've, I don't think I've ever seen locust grasshoppers, even starlings and swallows, hit each other. Um, Humans yeah, walking down the street, constantly hitting each other. <laughs> yeah, they just walk into each other all the time, yeah. Right, I have managed to clear some area out for the steel production. Some terrible robot port placements. No, <laughs> not, not, not really that bad, but uh, trying to figure out how to work around them. Hmm. Well, we'll replace it just. I'm just gonna rip it up for now. Oh, 114 logistics robots. And drop them all. Uh, 60, 64 construction robots. <laughs> I'll let the game make the noise, right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, my proposition, if you're ready for this, you see how we've got two very full pup, very full lines yes. here. I reckon we take one of these lines and run it around the top of the steel, like just run it across here into this line. And then these two we take down and feed into the bottom of the steel. But I don't understand why would we do that. Uh, because I think we need all this iron for the steel output. That's... I think. Hmm. I still think we need less iron... Well, less steel than iron plates. We do, but we need a lot more steel than we've got now. And I mean, like, a lot more steel. Because <laughs> we're, we're making... Add a rough guess, a third the steel that. Um, let's take this for a longer time so I can see what's going on. So yeah, we're making oh, even worse than that. We're making two k. No, we're consuming two k steel, but we're only um, we're consuming twenty two k iron. We're only making twenty k iron. We're making two k steel, so we're limited on the steel by the production. Uh, so we're gonna disassemble this entire thing, and I have a blueprint of half of that, uh, the iron production. Brilliant. Yeah, that sounds amazing. Let's do that. Uh, let's put it here. 
Uh, we've got a, a conflict at the top here. Um, That's alright, there's room, there's room. We can do it. I'll just clear these out for now. Everything yeah. else will get put. Input is gonna be... interesting to sort. Oh, science is finally done! Oh, bum bum bum! <laughs> <laughs> so the output actually needs to go up here, not... Well, High Command might be proud, but I doubt it. Oh, I think High Command might actually be uh, somewhat impressed that we've done something that is somewhat actually well laid out. Somewhat. Uh... <laughs> we, we've got exactly the right number of lines going in. Uh, we haven't. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it looks like each one of these actually will feed just one line, but that's okay. Well, hopefully by the time this starts backing up, we'll be covered. Uh... Production is at uh, eighty-eight thousand. Consumption is eighty-two thousand. <laughs> okay, that's that's Less, that's kind of good. Never sure what information I can get from this because, yes, it is being consumed, but it's not. It's being consumed at that level because there's not enough on the mm -hmm. belt. Though now we're producing five hundred in a minute, and we're consuming two hundred in a minute. And it doesn't seem to be going much over to... Mm, yeah, no, it keeps just tipping over the top of 200 and then dropping back down. But I think we're at the point where we are producing more than we're consuming. Else it would be 500 on each, right? Why can't we make electric trains? Yeah, yeah, What? what's the deal with that? Why can't we put a bunch of, like, power lines next to the train lines and then it takes all the power off of that? Uh, not just... Uh, 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 well, well, I, yeah, that would be that would be also great. That would be also or just power the train tracks. Just yeah, or, or electrify the rail, or have even like uh, this 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 refueling point here. We could just like be pumping batteries into it, which we then not take just batteries, dead just like batteries out. We, we can't make so well, yeah. many batteries. Sure we can. Sure we can. <laughs> recycling, Captain. Recycling. Just Reci We don't recycle on my mission. <laughs> we are consumers. Consumers of entropy. <laughs> uh, yeah, but. Why can't we actually power the trains using electricity? Yeah, no, that is crazy. That is definitely uh, something something that should be possible, but is not for some reason. Uh, but I think with that science officer, man, we have really pulled it out of the bag today. We've got a proper, <laughs> proper uh, still, so do you not think so? Still <laughs> smelting area. Uh, we've secured the area around the uh, the copper mine. Uh, we've continuously watched these guys on the left-hand side attack our base, but not really worry about it. Look, 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 there he is, right on the side there. Just, <laughs> just waiting. Just waiting. A medium biter ready to go. Ah, so what, 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 what is left for next time? It's the production of science, isn't it? That's, that's yes. what we're after next. All right. Well, I think with that, it's Captain's Log signing off.